Um, hello, welcome to this video. I'm Reza Rad from Radicad, and today I'm here with Arti Hi, Reza. from Microsoft. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. It's been a while since yes. we, have, we did, <laughs> <laughs> we did a few this years last now. time. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and your role changed quite a lot. At that time, I think you've been in Power Query team, right? Data uh, integration. In, in the data integration team, working on gateways at that point. That's right. Now it's yeah. still related. but Kind of still related, yes, yeah. But, yes. but now you are owning the whole administration part, is that right? The administration, security, network security, Correct. and many other enterprise promises um, for Fabric and Power BI. Right, that, that's correct, which is actually quite a... Uh, important area for enterprise customers mostly. Like if I'm a mainly like a Power BI user, I might not really deal much with administration. I would still do things like publish to web, disable, enable, yeah. those kind of things. But the security, compliance, uh, like the way that we manage workspaces, domains, subdomains, those are quite a lot of important things. Absolutely, and uh, to your point, yes, it, it does tie back to administrators, but there are different levels of administrators here. So there's a tenant admin, there's domain capacity admins, and then workspace admins too. So depending on the persona, it could be right from a global admin right. to a developer who owns a workspace and Correct. is working through the settings there. And we want to make sure that administration uh, starts at the tenant level, mm. but then is delegable all the way. So that way you have a way to manage core security configurations at the tenant level and overall, so every developer need not worry about it. But at the same time, one setting doesn't fit all, always. So Correct. how do you delegate it further and make that available at every other level? That's something uh, we're hoping to focus on. We've started on the journey. Yes. Uh, there are a few settings now. We're working through the others as well. Yeah, that's right. And and at the moment, like the tenant, uh, I mean, tenant admin has quite a lot of power, of yes. course. Uh, but then the domain admin and subdomain, <laughs> I mean, uh, with the workspace admin we'll as well. <laughs> yeah. So so these are in the plan, right? To yes. to make them like quite granular in terms of like what each can do and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we want to make sure at least uh, to an extent administration with respect to resource management, ca mm -hmm. capacity utilization, that set of configurations go via the capacity admin and then eventually to the workspace admin if needed. But then beyond that, there are other logical grouping like export to Excel, compliance related settings, which you're hoping that will flow via the domain to the workspace. So there's two way to uh, delegate it based on uh, what kind of a configuration that is. Correct. Yeah. The other thing for like um, the whole fabric adaption quite useful is is the certification. Yes. Right. Uh, we had that for Power BI, but but now fabric is all new and and uh, like how do you see it? Um, enterprise customers are still dubious to use it because of those or like they are tied together how, how does it work so it depends depends on the domain enterprise customers work on right and this is not the domain and fabric it's their business domain yeah, correct. Um, it just depends on that and uh, so for instance if there are companies in healthcare and want to use fabric mm. they do need HIPAA certification correct. and we worked really hard to make that available by I think the end of January that was made available. Similarly, we are working on certain others, but Power BI has a lot, and we are catching Correct, up to yes. it, and we, 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 we will keep catching up to it with respect to Fabric, but we do have a very good roadmap in that area, and we'll, we'll work through it. So we have High Trust, FedRAMP, and a few other certifications coming up as well. We'll eventually catch up, yes. Correct, yes, yeah, that's, that's right. Um, and, and in terms of like the, like the, N not a roadmap that you can talk about. Let's say the vision that you see with the whole administration of um, of Power BI now Fabric. Um, do you see this becoming something that we would manage with roles of, let's say, based on workload? For example, right now we have like tenant administrator, um, the domain-based, subdomain-based. That's one thing. But another thing is like, for example, I might have one. Mm -hmm. role for data science mm -hmm. administrator or data engineer administrator or Power BI administrator, which is only for that area. Do you see a need for something like this in future? 
So bringing in more and more roles and, um, and uh, settings and configurations, it's a balance between mm. a SaaS service and a PaaS service to some mm. extent. Yeah. So in Fabric, we want to strike that right balance. Immediately, um, maybe not in terms of bringing these roles in. And the reason being that as you bring in roles, then the democratization mm. of fabric and your data becomes a little tricky, right? Because there Correct. are so many folks involved and so many toggles to be toggled. Yeah. Um, and from that perspective, it makes it tricky. However, we've heard some base concerns about we need these roles because I'm worried that a user who has access and he runs a Spark notebook might might actually take over my capacity and something else will suffer. So we want to target those base problems. Mm. So we want to actually work through solutions which um, like search protection and a few others which, which we're working through and thinking about. Um, these are features which will help you in that area. Right. Um, similarly, more and more training for Fabric. That's mm. something the team and the leadership are totally dedicated to ensure folks have a lot of material to learn about it. Correct, yes. um, So that's where we're heading. However, we're listening to a lot of feedback. That's so it right. all depends on uh, where we land with these features and we still see some uh, gaps there. Then we'll come back and uh, see how to address it. That, that's right, yeah. And, and yeah, I totally agree, like adding more roles sometimes it also adds to the complexity of things as well because you can like yeah like you, you just have, have so to many understand options so many to other turn things. on and yeah. off yeah. yeah yeah even right now tenant settings is quite busy already and <sighs> even workspace roles and permissions have gotten a little bit complex with mm. so many workloads coming in yeah that's so right so adding more uh, we want to make sure we have the right balance yeah. so so we'll wait see how the other features help and then come back if it's needed We'll, we'll try to find a solution. Correct, yes. Yeah, and, and among all of these, the capacity settings, those kind of areas, is also under your ownership, right? No, no, that's no. that's under my one of my colleagues. Um, right, okay. Yeah. But, uh, but we do work closely because these admins, uh, mm -hmm. to a great extent with respect to configurations, etc., we want to ensure that they have the right experience, the right balance, right, uh, and true to their persona. Right. So we we generally work together to ensure that happens. But general capacity management uh, is uh, managed by one of my uh, colleagues. Right. Okay. Yeah. But but the admin APIs and yep. like commandlets for PowerShell, those kind of areas. Yes. Um, that that actually is an area that's changed quite a lot in the past few years. Like we had like a couple of APIs, but then like gradually yes. things added. Um, like the use case of API is like, I think two sides. One is like mm, some who wants to automate things which would use this in a custom application or in a PowerShell. And the other one is more around um, using it just let's say in a custom application if I want to write it. Yep. Um, do you see more usage of APIs mm, in PowerShell, or do you see that mostly used in custom application? If it is something we see it you can mostly talk about. API usage and not direct PowerShell usage. Not PowerShell. Yeah. Okay. So we see more of that, and we have been actually invest, uh, investing a fair bit over there as well. Right. Like you rightly pointed out, it's a lot about automation, but one in scenarios where folks are building their own applications. But on the other hand, as we're bringing in more and more workloads, admins want to ensure that they can automate a lot of the administration capabilities. So uh, based on all of that, we have been working on a few. We had a few uh, read settings, mm -hmm. the delegations we introduced, we, we made sure that those are available via APIs as well. Um, more and more to come, yes. Right. A lot to be done in that area because usually we are focusing on getting the feature out first. Correct. Um, the APIs uh, are a bit later, but we definitely want to catch up and make sure uh, we can support automation. Right, okay. So, so in the roadmap to come, again, those things that you are talking about. What What is the vision for the overall administration experience in Microsoft Fabric? I mean, where it is heading to? So, uh, like I said, we want to ensure that administration is, uh, is, is uh, easy to some extent that you come in. It mm. is intuitive. But on the same hand, there's another aspect of administration where you need to get insights to be able to administer. 
So um, the admin portal itself allows you to set configurations and so on, and we definitely want to in, uh, improve the experience there, right. ensure that as more and more settings get added, we recently added a search, we, uh, we did a few uh, new settings, uh, notifications and so on. But, uh, but we're still working on ensuring that um, the experience is easy for admins to use. So that's right. one hand on. The other side is where uh, we want to ensure that the admins have enough insights about their mm. tenants where uh, they can understand usage and adoption of fabric. That is quite uh, important. Yeah, and beyond that, like uh, investigate issues, for instance, like we're understanding are there reports which are overshared? Mm. Are people who are um, people who have licenses are they licensed right based on their usage? Correct. Um, yes. Things like that. I think we want to help solve uh, with admin monitoring. Mm. So admin monitoring is uh, in uh, public preview now, and we've been adding a few reports there and a data model. the the gold pe The golden piece of it is the data model where That's you right, can yeah. use it, bring in your data, for instance, licensing data, mm. um, and then join and do a bunch of stuff. You could bring in uh, your organizational data and figure out who is what, like who is using what. Correct, um, yes. A lot, lot of use cases in there. Mm. So, so we do have auditing data in there and some of our metadata, which actually helps you connect with other data sets and help you with that. So that's overall like help you govern with insights mm. is more we want to get to. We're in the journey. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that is one of the most exciting feature for for the users. Not not that administration is not exciting or security not, but that is the one that a lot of people been looking forward to. Like we had this like admin report, but it wasn't really a yeah. good report. Now, now we have much more capabilities around it, which is really helpful. Yeah, yeah I'm sure awesome. a lot of enterprise customers would really love that. Um, anything you would like to explain that I didn't ask about? Um, just, I think beyond that, uh, my team also work focuses on enterprise fundamentals. Right. Um, so a lot of network security features. In the last month, I think we released three more features which actually went into public preview, uh, which unblocks uh, not only inbound access to uh, uh, fabric, like secure inbound access to fabric from your own VNets, um, and allows connectivity to ADLS, uh, protected storage, in a very, very easy manner. Right. So uh, there were three features released and definitely take a look at it. We uh, will talk about it at the Fabric Conference too and then uh, we, right, will, yeah. uh, we will definitely, uh, we're hoping to GA in a few months. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> looking forward to it. Great. Uh, how uh, people can give you feedback? Is it like the ideas that yes. um, that, that is the Best Absolutely, yeah. We we definitely review ideas not only during planning for every we plan every six months, uh, six months, but but we look at ideas very often just to right. see if you're on track with what what folks are asking for. Uh, do we need to uh, do we need to course correct and a lot of things. So definitely post your suggestions on ideas, and uh, the team does look into it and uh, will work towards it. Right. Okay, that's cool. And how uh, people can connect with you? Is it LinkedIn the best platform? Twitter? Which one you LinkedIn, usually use? LinkedIn, yes. LinkedIn definitely works. LinkedIn, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll make sure that we put like your LinkedIn Perfect. profile URL here. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate that. And wish you have a good rest of Microsoft Fabric journey we would <laughs> we exciting would journey all, yes. <laughs> all the time with <laughs> all the requests uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, until the next video bye thank you bye thank you